The next thing we're going to do is create a new sequence. To create a new sequence, I'm going to show you a very easy way right now, and then later on, I'll follow it up with more details. Pick the video that is going to be the most popular or the most used type of video in your sequence. For example, I have an interview clip. I also have B-roll that has all types of footage. While all of this footage matches, you might not have footage for your own project that matches the frame rate, the frame size, maybe you have some 4K footage, maybe you have some regular 1920 by 1080 footage. Pick the video clip that is going to be used the most. For me, it's going to be my interview clip. So I'm just going to take this clip and literally just drag it onto this new item button, this one that looks like a post-it note. What happens is a new sequence pops up our footage is added to the timeline already and the sequence settings for this timeline match our video clip. If you go up to sequence, sequence settings, you'll see all of the settings, the frame size, the frame rate, the audio settings. This matches your video footage and that's what you want. You don't want a mismatch. So when you're choosing which video to use, just remember, use the video that's going to be used most in your video sequence. Now we have this timeline. Let's just go over the basic rules of what this timeline does. We have our video tracks up here, our three video tracks, then we have our three audio tracks down here. We can move a video clip or audio clip around by dragging up or dragging down to a new track or moving to the left or right. We see at the top we have our time, we have our timeline indicator that we can click and drag. This is this blue little line in there. We can zoom into our timeline. Down here, we have the slider that slides along the timeline. At the end, if we click the end and drag in or out, we can zoom in. You can also press the plus or minus key buttons that are to the left of the delete key on a Mac or to the left of the backspace button on a PC and that will zoom in and zoom out of your timeline. There are still a lot of buttons in this timeline that we haven't covered yet, but we will be covering all the things that you need to know throughout the rest of the lessons. Now, I mentioned before that this was the easy way to create a new sequence. If you think you've got it and you just wanna know this easy way, you can go ahead and skip on to the next lecture and the next practice activity. But for those of you who want a little bit more information, let's get going. You can, instead of dragging into this new item button, just click New Sequence. You could also go up to File, New, Sequence, and this will pop open the New Sequence module where you actually can choose the sequence settings yourself. There are three tabs, your sequence presets, settings, and tracks. The sequence presets, these actually have some presets for different types of cameras and different types of shooting that might match what you want. For example, maybe you shot with a digital SLR, a DSLR, and you shot at 1080, 24 frames per second. You might want to just select that preset. Maybe you shot on a red camera. They have lots of different red preset settings. So that's one way to do it. Or you can choose your settings yourself, customize it. Go to the settings tab, drop down to custom under editing mode, then you can go, go through everything. The time base, what's your frames per second? 23,976, 29,997. Your frame size, 1920 by 1080, or is it 1280 by 720? Make sure that it matches how you shot your footage. Pixel aspect fields display, these will all stay the same. Audio sample rate, 48,000 hertz, that's typically what you wanna choose. Display format, audio samples is good. Video previews. All of this will typically stay the same, except if you have a smaller frame size, say 1280 by 720, you might, this will change as well to match your frame size. At the bottom, you can rename your sequence. So if you have a documentary version one, you might wanna call it that. And last is the tracks. This is where you number how many video and audio tracks you want. 
The standard is set to three. We have three video tracks up here and three audio tracks. We can add audio tracks later on. It's very easy. I'll show you in just one second. When you're done and you're happy with your settings, just click OK. That will open up a new timeline right here. And the sequences also show up in your project panel over here. I mentioned adding new tr audio tracks and video tracks. When you have video a video clip on your timeline, you can literally drag it up into the empty space above the tracks to create a fourth audio track or a fifth one or a sixth one. And same with the audio. I think I said audio before, but that was video. This is audio. So those are some more advanced tips for creating a sequence that has the perfect settings if you have something that you don't want to match your camera. Typically though, you want your sequence settings to match exactly what you shot as, so just do the easy way of dragging into this new item button.